Welcome everyone again. I hope you had an interesting time exploring the posters from our department by graduate students. I believe they were, I thought they were very exciting and all very high quality. So thanks everyone again for preparing and discussing your research. So now we are in the second part of our expo where we will hear from four graduate students four brief talks to explain about their research representative from four different um, fields in our department, as you will see from materials, fission, fusion, and nuclear security. And these will be about 10 minute talks, followed by two, three minutes of Q&A. So feel welcome to ask as open questions as you like, including our visiting students. And with that, we can start. So our first speaker is Yang Yang, where he represents the materials field in our department, and his talk is on in situ observational corrosion and radiation damage by electron microscopy. Hi, everyone. Welcome to NSC Expo. Today, I will introduce some very interesting in situ observations of the corrosion and radiation damage in structural materials. I'm, for, I'm from Professor Julie's group. The structural materials in nuclear reactors is, un, is working under harsh environment. The degradation of structural materials can cause big problems. For example, the high temperature corrosion of zirconium cladding materials in nuclear reactors can generate a lot of hydrogen and led to uh, hydrogen explosions in Fukushima. Materials in nuclear reactors are un working under harsh environment, high temperature, corrosion, radiation damage, and mechanical deformation. All these environmental effects will contribute to the degradation of materials, either individually or collaboratively. And it is a very complicated multi-physics problem. So we need to design some more robust materials. But to do this, we have to first understand the fundamental mechanisms. Understanding the material response to radiation and then corrosion is very challenging. So uh, traditional as situ experiments like a black box. So you put a high school Bill Gates in the black box and you get a billionaire. But you don't know why he becomes successful. And we want to know more about the details. So if we can have an in situ experiment, we can visualize the whole process and then get more uh, idea about what's going on. An in situ visualization requires a good imaging tool. Materials have some hierarchical structures, and many of the corrosion and radiation damage happens at a very small scale. So we need to use a very good uh, tool to visualize it. And transmission electron microscope is a good tool to visualize the small scale process. So at MIT Julie Group, we are developing a series of in situ TM experiments to visualize the corrosion and the radiation damage. We can do high temperature radiation damage, mechanical, def mechanical deformation, and et cetera. We want to mimic the extreme environment in nuclear reactors and try to understand the material's response to extreme environment. The first case I'm going to show you is an experiment done for mechanical deformation in oxygen environment. The materials in nuclear reactors and uh, also the spent fuel dry cask are always at a stressed state. So suppose we have a metal like this, and here is a small crack. The, the crack is covered by an oxide layer. The oxide is a passivation layer, which prevents the metal from further oxidation. Because of the stress, there may be a crack inside the, the oxide. So the embrittling elements, such as oxygen, or hydrogen will diffuse in and leading to more severe internal oxidation. Because of this, the crack may propagate and cause some big problem. We definitely don't want this to happen. So we hope that the metal oxide can be liquid-like. So no, so no matter how we deform it, it can always be continuous. There is another very important question. So during the self-healing process of the oxide, for crystalline material, there will always be a green boundary or oxide oxide green boundary. This boundary is prone to cracking, and we don't want this to happen. So we hope that the oxide layer can be liquid-like, and then there will be a seamless coalescence when the two oxide islands meet. 
And this kind of structure is more crack resistant. However, from previous literatures, we know that metal oxide is very brittle. And it's impossible to have a liquid like metal oxide at room temperature. Recently, some researchers discovered that for a very thin polymer film, maybe around 10 nanometers thick, it can be liquid like at room temperature. And we record that for aluminum, it has a very thin layer of oxide on top of it. It is only two to three nanometers thick, and it is in amorphous structure. So it is very probable that this oxide layer can be liquid-like. However, because, of, because this oxide layer is too small, so nobody has really observed how it is deformed in oxygen environment. So we decide to design this experiment to watch the deformation of aluminum oxide in oxygen environment. This is our experimental setup. We first have two aluminum nanotips, and then we bring them to contact. Because the nanotips are very small, they can be cold welded. And then we inject oxygen and try to pull it inside the TEM. This image shows the sample before the deformation. The left part is aluminum, and the right part is oxygen gas. In between, there is a thin layer of aluminum oxide. We look at the deformation process of aluminum oxide in oxygen environment, and we can see that it's liquid-like. And no matter how we deform it, it's always continuous. If we compare the behavior before and after, you will see that the oxide layer can be elongated to twice long, but there's no cracks or spallations, which means that it is really liquid-like. And if we can pull it very rapidly, we can create some fresh metal surface. With this fresh metal surface, we can observe the initial oxidation of aluminum. So people know that aluminum oxide, chromium oxide, and silicon oxide are special oxide. But they don't know why they are special. And nobody has observed how they are formed at atomic resolution. So here, for the first time, we show the formation of aluminum oxide at atomic resolution. And we see that the new oxide will first grow near the old oxide and spread on the surface. And they will merge at the center. When they merge, there is a very fascinating thing. So we find that after relaxation, there is no glass-glass interface or oxide-oxide interface in the oxide. It also proves that the oxide layer is liquid-like. And at the end, the oxide is very smooth and conformal. And it, the new oxide is connected to the old oxide very well. So what can we do with this discovery? We know that aluminum oxide is a good hydrogen permeation barrier. And hydrogen is very bad for metal. It will make metal very brittle. And the tritium is also very bad. We want to keep it inside the nuclear reactors. So we are considering to develop a multi-layer uh, hydrogen permeation barriers. So we are inserting an aluminum beneath the aluminum oxide. And this will activate the self-healing property of aluminum oxide. So if there is a crack, it can be healed rapidly. Also, we are considering multi-layer structure to have a defense in depth mechanism. So what I show here is just a small piece of the work in our group. We, are some, we have some more exciting experiments. One of them is the observation of radiation damage in structural materials. We have produced some metal carbon nanotube composite. This video shows a carbon nanotube in metal. It's absorbing, absorbing a line defect. So we show that carbon nanotube can enable the metal to self-heal the radiation defects. Because of this, we are, we are trying to develop some metal carbon, nanotube com metal carbon nanotube composite for the nuclear cladding materials. I want to end my talk with the scope of the reactor designs. So this is where we are now. The materials is already working under a very harsh environment. And these are the future reactors. So we are going for higher temperature, which means higher corrosion and uh, more radiation damage. And we are trying to use in situ TM technique to understand this corrosion and radiation damage process. And based on our understanding, we want to develop more robust materials for nuclear reactors. I want to thank my team members and collaborators and the funding sources. And here are more projects ongoing in our group. If you are interested in them, please feel free to visit our website and know more about it. Thank you.
thank you very much, Young, for this very interesting talk. So, questions for Young Yes. How are you accommodating the different thermal expansion coefficients between iron, aluminium, and then ceramic? So, it's a good question. Uh, are you asking about the thermal expansion? So, we are doing it at a uh, room temperature. So, uh, there's not so much thermal expansion. And uh, at a higher temperature, because the, uh, the thermal activated effect, the aluminum oxide will behave more like a liquid. So, uh, people find that for the uh, for a thin film, uh, the glass transition temperature will decrease uh, if the thing is thinner and thinner. So when things uh, are goes beyond glass transition temperature, it has more liquid-like behaviors, and then which means means it can be more ductile and cover the surface better. But uh, at some certain point, when the temperature is very high, the aluminum oxide will become crystalline structure. So we are uh, trying to apply these coatings at uh, below the, the crystalline formation temperature. So somewhat related to that, what, why is alumina behaving like a very ductile wetting layer that spreads versus zirconium oxide that doesn't do that? Uh, thank so you for amorphous oxides do that? If you amorphize zirconia, that will also do that? Or something else with alumina? Yeah. Uh, it's also a very good question. So let's, let me first explain the, uh, the reason for the liquid-like behavior of aluminum oxide. So it is because of two reasons. The first reason is that uh, uh, it is very thin. And for a thin film, it has many uh, uh, fast surface kinetics. And there are many uncoordinated uh, atoms. So, and they can self-heal very rapidly. On the other hand, uh, the chemi-absorbed oxygen can help to repair the cracks on the surface. So it will behave like liquid-like. But for a um, just amorphous material, which cannot react with oxygen, um, we are not very sure if it, it can still be liquid-like. And also, uh, I think it would be very interesting to test some other amorphous uh, uh, metal oxide to see if they will still behave like a liquid. So we can make a more, a sor more uh, solid conclusion. Thank you. One last question for Yang. <laughs> All right. So if not, let's thank Yang Yang again. Thank you.